Well, welcome to another season of Catholic evangel evangelization outreach. And you would think at this point I would be able to say that word without stumbling on it, but I just can't seem to do that. Uh, my name is Lisa Bellafato. I'm a parishioner here at St. Margaret Mary. And uh, can you believe here we are? The summer's winding down. Next weekend is the first weekend of fall, and we are back from our hiatus and ready for another season here uh, with CEO. I represent uh, a very dedicated team of parishioners who uh, really work hard on creating the speaker lineup for this series and also doing all the details uh, that it takes to put on an event like this. So you've probably met several of them when we came in, they have their CEO name tags on, but I just want to thank all of uh, Lou and the whole team for the hard work you do for putting on such a great series. So thank you very much. Uh, this is a nice uh, crowd tonight, which is wonderful, and of course, it's always fun to see uh, some of our regulars who come, but is, is this the first time for anyone at CEO? Oh, go oh, wow, a lot of new ones. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for uh, coming tonight and being with us. You know, we really love this program because it's designed to help strengthen our relationship with God, and it's an opportunity for us to share our faith stories with each other and share the good news of our love of Jesus Christ and how God works in our lives. So I am very excited to get to introduce to you our speaker this evening. Um, I'm sure many of you know him quite, quite well. So it's my pleasure to introduce Paul Willett. And Paul was born and raised here in Louisville, Kentucky. He attended St. Philip Neary School and DeSales High School. He's a graduate of the University of Kentucky and in 1976, he married Kay Byerly, and they have been married for 43 years. Where's Kay? That's awesome. I love that. Kay's a sweetheart, too. In 1989, they returned back to Louisville after moving around the country for Paul's job. They have four children, Elizabeth, Louis, Andrew, and Ellen. And I hear there's a son-in-law, Jeremy's here tonight, so welcome to you as well. And they are blessed with two wonderful grandchildren, Troy and Ella. Paul is retired from his full-time career where he spent over 31 years working in the airline industry. He worked for American Airlines, TWA, PSA, US Airways, and finally back with American Airlines. So I hope you heard the key word there that he retired because get ready for this list, okay? He still works part-time during the live racing meets for Churchill Downs, where he's worked for over 25 years. He also works a few days a week for Enterprise Rent-A-Car. He's on the alumni board of directors for DeSales High School. He's involved with the Sierra Club of Louisville, where he's the program director recruiting speakers. And now, this Paul wrote this, so you'll love this. And lastly, Number five, in his spare time, he can be found around the St. Margaret Mary campus, helping in a variety of jobs. If that isn't the understatement of the century, I don't know what is, because I can think of CEO, he's just taken on uh, being in charge of our Christ Renews His Parish. I know we spend some time together on pastoral care team. I know you're involved with the youth organization, uh, Eucharistic adoration. I think you work in the parish office. I'm sure I'm missing something, but this man is just absolutely amazing, and we're so blessed to have you here, Paul, at St. Margaret Mary. So without further ado, let's give a warm St. Margaret Mary welcome for Paul. Okay, I've got this microphone on. Can you hear me in the back? All right, they told me to talk loud. Hey, thank you, Lisa. Thank you for joining me this evening at St. Margaret Mary for the opportunity for me to share my faith journey with you. I'm pretty humbled by this opportunity to speak with you tonight. And I'd like to begin with a reading from the Gospel of John. So please pray with me. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again 
and take you to myself so that where I am, you may also be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the truth and the the way and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So yes, there are many dwelling places in our Father's house. There's room for all of us. And I want to share with you my journey to get to our Father's house, which we know is heaven. My name is Paul Willett, and I was the first child born to my parents, but the second child to be a part of their family. My cousin Bill, who was 10 years older than me, lived with my parents before I was born. Bill's mother died when he was very young, and his father chose not to raise him, so my mother and father chose to raise him. Then at the age of three, my father passed away. He died of a heart attack. My mother now had to raise my cousin and me by herself. Our home was a two-story house, and on the first floor was a beauty shop, which my mother operated, and we lived on the second floor. I attended St. Philip Neary School during my primary years, and it was there that I received the sacraments of initiation, baptism, reconciliation, first Eucharist, and confirmation. And after grade school, I attended DeSales High School. The school was run by the Carmelite Friars, and most of my teachers were priests or brothers. The seeds of my Catholic faith were planted and fertilized and watered by these men during this time. Unfortunately, it would be many years before their work would show any fruit. And after graduation from DeSales, it was off to the University of Kentucky for me. My college years were very ordinary, except that it took me six years to graduate with a four-year degree. I had a great time at UK. I joined a fraternity, dated a few girls, and partied a very lot, much lot. Whoa, gosh, too much. I, I attended Mass at the Newman Center on a somewhat regular basis, and I look back on this period and realize I was attending Mass more to be seen at Mass rather than to celebrate the Eucharist. And then after graduating from UK, I returned back to Louisville to find a job. I moved back home to live in my mother's house above the beauty shop. So now I'm 24 years old, looking for a job, looking for a girl to marry me. My high school and college buddies were all married by now, or they were in relationships at this point in their life. So I got a job at Stewart's Department Store as a management trainee. And in 1974, I met my future wife, Kay. She was also working at Stewart's. We dated for two years and grew in love, finally marrying in May of 1976. And right after our marriage, my mother passed away. She died due to liver failure and cancer. My mother had provided me and my cousin with home and security. She sent me to Catholic schools for 12 years. She worked very hard in her life, and I didn't know it at the time, but following my dad's death, she turned to working constantly and to alcohol to dull the pain of losing her husband and my dad at such an early age. And after my mother passed away, something in me just went haywire. You can, you can call it my youth or inexperience with dealing with life issues. I'm not sure what it was, but probably my emotions, my immaturity, but I was definitely confused. And something inside of me decided I knew, needed to move from Louisville. I guess to try to forget all the family memories or just the lack of no family memories at all. Looking back, I now see it was a really poor decision and very unfair to my wife. So I started applying for jobs outside of Louisville, and I was fortunate enough to land a job with a major airline in Cincinnati, Ohio. We moved to northern Kentucky to begin a new life, away from all the memories of my growing up. So I began a very successful work career. The next 12 years were a series of promotions, moving to new cities, new communities, and new work friends. During these 12 years, we had four children moving all over the country. My wife had no support network, no family support, and sadly, very little support from me either. You see, I threw myself into each promotion, fully committed to doing the best job I could. I was 100% success as a financial provider for my family, but I was a miserable failure as a husband and father during this time. 
Our four children, two girls and two boys, are separated by only eight years. What that means is there were two children in diapers for a very long time. And with each move to a new city, we would join a Catholic parish. We remained true to our Catholic faith so my wife could develop a little bit of a support network for her own mental sanity. I was having a great professional life. And in my life, in my mind, life was good, or so I thought. And in 1988, we were living in Nashville, Tennessee at the time, and I received a postcard from my high school inviting me to my 20th high school reunion. But wow, has it been 20 years? Where'd the time go? I thought we can get my mother-in-law to watch our kids, and I told my wife it'd be a great time. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking I wanted to go so I could show everybody just how successful I was. Well, I went to my high school reunion for the class of 1968, and what an eye-opening experience it was for me. I left feeling I was a complete failure in life. In reconnecting with my high school friends, some of these guys I went to school with for nearly 12 years. And I don't remember that there was a lot of talk about our Catholic faith, but there was a lot of talk about our relationships with our families. We only briefly talked about our occupations. It was during this time that I realized I have no relationship with my family. I was simply the financial provider for them. My wife was the caregiver, the consoler, and the counselor for our family. From 1976 to 1988, I had devoted my entire time and energy into my job. I had hidden the fact that I didn't know how to be a husband or a father to my family. I realized I had little or no relationship with them other than providing them the money needed to survive. So what happened to me? I mean, this is not who I am, or is it? So let me get back to the beginning of my talk. I told you my father died when I was three years old. I don't have any recollection of my father. I don't doubt his love for me. I just have no memory of it because I was so young when he died. When I was growing up, I couldn't remember my mother attending any ball games I played in or come to any school functions for me. She was working and drinking. This was her way of attempting to heal. So now I realize what was going on in my life. I didn't know how to be a parent or really grow into a, a loving relationship with others. I didn't think it was my fault. I just never got to be a part of these relationships growing up. I just didn't know how to do it. I threw myself so much into my job to avoid showing my family I didn't know how to be a husband or a father. I was lucky that my wife didn't get rid of me years earlier. So now let me go back to the summer of 1988. After the, I attended my high school reunion, I did a lot of praying to God. I was saying I was sorry for the decisions I made during the first 12 years of my marriage. I decided it was time to become a member of my family. And I asked my wife what I could do to become a better husband and a father. And she let me come to my own conclusion about this. I asked her if she wanted to return to Louisville and raise our children here. She said yes. And deep down I knew she wanted to return to our home city. And I also wanted to return home. My heart had now healed over the loss of my mother. And I knew this would be the best decision for our family. Okay, so now what to do? What's the plan, God? So I'm still working for that same airline. And I called the general manager for my company in Louisville. He was a college buddy of mine from the UK. I told him I wanted to return to Louisville and work at the airport in any job he had available. He told me I was crazy. He said, I, you can't do this. I said, I have to. My family needs me to do this. Eventually, he relented and offered me a job in Louisville. I now had to tell my current manager what I wanted to do. He also said I was crazy, that I was committing career suicide. Things like this weren't done in the business world. But he too finally relented and allowed me to take a new job in Louisville. So I gave up a very good paying sales manager job where I was highly thought of by my boss, my coworkers. I traveled all over the country. I was gone three or four nights a week, promoting my company, entertaining clients to get or increase their business for my company, to a part-time ticket agent in Louisville, Kentucky, putting people on airplanes. I took a tremendous pay cut, but it was worth it eventually. So in 1989, we moved from Nashville, Tennessee to Louisville for my new job. And it was quite an adjustment for everyone. We had four children ranging in ages three to 11. They had never had a full-time father living with them, only a mother. 
And without the example of a role model, I thought they loved me and I knew I loved them. We just had to learn how to express our love to each other. And I did learn how to love and care for them. I learned how from the people within the St. Margaret Mary Parish. Through the sacraments that are celebrated at our parish, actively participating in Sunday Mass and receiving the Eucharist and reconciliation. I watched how the parents nurtured their children at school events, at social events, and all the sporting events. I got involved in parish activities too since I was now home every night. I became involved with the boosters at St. Margaret Mary. I worked every fish fry from 1990 till 2000. I helped at the summer picnics from the same year, from 1990 to 2000. I helped start the cross-country program here at St. Margaret Mary. And as I grew more comfortable in my faith, I began teaching the public school students registered at St. Margaret Mary. I taught many years, for many years, the seventh and eighth grade students, leading them through the confirmation preparation program. Hey, life was now very good. But you know, just like watching a Hallmark movie on TV, when life is going very well, something you perceive as bad can happen to challenge you, challenge your faith, and so it happened to me. In 1995, my company had a large downsizing. I lost my job. Now, I had the option to relocate to another city, but at this point in my family's life, we made the decision to stay in Louisville. God had his loving arms around us when I made this decision with my wife. So now, with our oldest child heading off to UK and a son ready to start high school the next year, I was about to be unemployed. God, help me. God, what am I going to do? And just as Moses had to learn to trust God, so did I. Let me read to you from Exodus chapter 3. Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this will be the sign that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Okay, God, you're going to be with me. Help me, God. Guide me, God. What am I going to do? And so I had to get another job. I got one making about half my previous salary. Eventually, I got a, a job with another airline at the Louisville airport. I also had to get a part-time job working at Churchill Downs, and one of my DeSales classmates got me the job to help me pay the bills. And in the fall of 1995, we still had three children at St. Margaret Mary. That's three children playing three sports for the year. That's a lot of sports activity fees, along with the stewardship to St. Margaret Mary, tuition to Presentation Academy, for our older daughter. Oh, and I, did I mention braces? Money was tight, very tight. So during that school year, the Booster Club president here at St. Margaret Mary came to me and returned the checks that I had written for the activity fees for the school year. He said the Booster Club had decided to return the money to me. He said, you and your wife do so much for St. Margaret Mary, we trust you'll pay it back at a later time. We were overwhelmed by that gesture. Now that same school year, my son was finishing the eighth grade, again, here at St. Margaret Mary, and he wanted to attend a private Catholic high school. But he said he would go to Wagner if we didn't have the money. So in the spring of 1996, I went there and I met with the business manager at the time. I explained my predicament. My son wants to attend your school. I don't have the money to pay the tuition. Can you help me? Well, he listened to me. He said they offer a work-study program for needy students if that helps. And he gave me the necessary per paperwork saying return it to him and he'll let me know a week after I return the forms. I needed a lot more than the amount he told me. I didn't tell him that, but I thought God will help me with this. I didn't know how just yet, but I knew he would. So I returned the forms to the business manager a couple of weeks later, and he called to say my son would be placed in the work-study program, that he can start when the St. Margaret Mary school year ends, even before the freshman year starts at the high school. I confessed to him that we probably needed more help than the amount he offered through the work-study program. He said, don't worry about it, that he had a plan. What I later discovered was some of the St. Margaret Mary parishioners wrote letters and called the school on our behalf. 
They told them to admit my son that our family was a family you wanted to be a part of their family. Two years later, I called and said I had another son ready to come to the, excuse me, to the school. He said the same deal applied to him. And now over 20 years have passed, and our two families are still intertwined. God is so very good. What a journey this has been. And once again, I learned that God is with me. In my faith journey at St. Margaret Mary continued to grow and get stronger through regular mass attendance and receiving the sacraments. I got involved in the Renew Bible Study program, became a Eucharistic minister, joined that man as you in a variety of parish life activities that provided continued spiritual growth for me. And as time marched on in our family's lives, our children completed their education, they moved out, began careers on their own, got married and had children. And then in the fall of 2014, I attended our parish's Christ Renews His Parish retreat. Our parish has almost 400 people that have attended the retreat. How many of you here have attended the, the Christ Renews? Look at, look at all these hands raised for this. What I'm doing right now is a shameless plug. For, tho for those men here tonight that haven't attended the retreat, please consider it. I promise you won't regret it. And see me or any of the people that had their hands raised, uh, we'll talk to you about it after, the, after my talk. So back to the retreat. I had to take vacation time from my job to attend. You see, I worked every weekend at the airport, and this was no easy task. The retreat, as many of you know, is a tremendous experience. It's an opportunity to reconnect with God. It's a time for healing, a time for spiritual growth. And after attending the retreat, I made the decision to join the next formation team. And the formation team met on Sunday mornings. Now, what was I thinking? I work every weekend. There is no way I can do this. But in the excitement of the moment, in which I wasn't thinking clearly, I was coming on Sunday mornings. And for the first two formation meetings, I would go to work early on Sunday. And I mean early. I would go to work at 4.30. I would get our flights out. I would then come to St. Margaret Mary, attend the formation meetings, and then return back to work. And then I thought, hey, maybe this will work out, I thought. It's October. The weather's good. There's no flight delays no cancellations, no passenger problems, no employee problems. Hey, God, thank you. It is working so far. Well, the following week, my manager, and where is he? He's here. Greg, where are you? My manager, who is here tonight with me, called me into his office to tell me that I was to begin my retirement from our company, American Airlines, the next day. You remember? Yep. I thought, wow, I didn't tell you this, Greg, but God, you really can move quickly. <laughs> I now had my weekends free for the formation team, but that was okay. I was 64 years old. My company had merged with another airline. There was an abundance of jobs, abundance of employees, people doing the same jobs. I was ready and willing to begin another chapter of my journey. This was definitely a moment when God intervened in my life. As St. John Paul II tells us, life with Christ is a wonderful adventure. So for the next few years, I continued to help at various ministries in our parish. I started assisting our in our parish office on Sunday mornings. I joined the Sarah Club of Louisville. Their mission is dedicated to spiritual growth, continuing Catholic adult education, and the encouragement of church vocations. As St. John Vianney tells us, the saints did not all begin well, but they ended well. I started letting God use me in a way he saw, when he saw the need, rather than just saying, I can't, I don't have time, or just no. I chose to say yes, because he is with me as I learned in Exodus. And in June, of 2015, our parish started a Wednesday evening Eucharistic adoration. This is a quiet time spent here in our church sanctuary with our Savior, Jesus Christ. It can be a time of reciting prayers, praying a rosary, praying devotions, or simply reading a Bible. It's also a time of reflection, just sitting or kneeling and listening to our God speak to us. 
Mother Teresa tells us we need to find God and he, and he cannot be found in noise and restlessness. God is the friend of silence. This is where I found God. Yes, that same God that said to Moses, I will be with you. I could feel him in my heart. He is with me. And then while helping with the Christ Renews His Parish retreat in March of 2017, after giving a talk on Father's loving care, I suffered a heart attack going into cardiac arrest. A retired Louisville Metro policeman was on the church property. He and the retreat team provided the medical assistance and prayers to keep me alive. Our pastor gave me the last rites of our church. No one expected me to survive. I was in a coma for five days. And when I awoke, there was much confusion on my part. What happened? Where was I? Why? I had no idea of the outpouring of prayers and support from our parish family that I received. And I still have difficulty grasping it. I got to receive and experience the Father's loving care that I had just spoke about on the previous Sunday in a way only a few people lived to talk about. And once again, I realized he is with me. I asked myself why I lived. Why did God not take me home, as they say? Tell me, Lord, what is your plan for me? I spent the next few months healing physically, mentally, and emotionally. This period was difficult time for me. Coming to Mass was awkward at times. I was in deep survivor guilt. I continued to ask God, why? What is your plan for me? And when I became strong enough during my recovery, I returned to adoration on Wednesday evenings here at St. Margaret Mary. It was here, in this sanctuary, in the silence, in the stillness, while praying to God, listening to him, that I heard him again speak to me. And I learned that I wasn't going to get the answer to the question that I ask him over and over. Why me, Lord? Yes, I wanted to know the answer. I realized, but it's not for me to know. I'm not in charge. It's not my plan. It's his plan. And once I learned to accept this, my life began to return to normal. My attitude shifted from why, why, to simply consenting to God's plan for me. And this was no easy task either. What does he know? I know myself better than anyone else. Yeah, me. Except that there is one person that knows me better. In Psalm 139, we hear, Lord, you have probed me. You know when I sit and stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. You sift through my travels and my rest. With all my ways, you are familiar. Even before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it all. So who am I to doubt God's plan? His plan for me and for each of you will end with eternal life with him. The journey to fulfilling God's plan unfolds minute by minute, hour by hour. The journey getting there is how our loving Father shows us how much he truly loves us. Do you remember earlier when I read from Exodus, God said to Moses, I will be with you. I will be with you. Very powerful words, but they can easily be forgotten when situations arise in our daily lives or in my daily life. Situations like a job loss, a medical crisis, or just any event in our daily life. God has been with me every moment on this journey. Every new city I moved to, he was there with me. Every moment, every hour, even right now, he was and is here guiding me. And when I doubted his presence, he sent reinforcements to guide me. He sent me an army of angels to walk with me on this journey I'm traveling. And he gave me a visible human presence of himself. I want you to look around this sanctuary. You are that visible human presence of our loving God that he sent me. When I had doubts or needed help, God sent me you. In John's gospel, we hear, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you so you also should love one another. He sent me so many people over all of these years, people of various faiths, 
people of a, with a variety of talents to travel with me. He sent me a team of first responders and medical people to keep me alive and serve me. He sent me a faith community that prayed for me that I would live. He sent me attorneys to keep me on a straight and narrow path to follow him. He sent me a geologist to keep my faith grounded. He sent me an improv comedian to keep my faith young and vibrant. And he sent me a CPA to teach me to count my blessings and to show me how to be a humble, joyful servant of our Lord. Now, why did God do this for me? He could have just let me die on March 5th, but he didn't. I still don't know why, but I really don't ask him anymore either. I believe I found the answer to why in Luke in chapter 12. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. There's my answer. I have been given so much in my lifetime. A loving wife, four beautiful children, two sons-in-law, two grandchildren. It's now time to repay our Lord for all he has done for me. So now we know the plan, eternal life with him. And he provides a roadmap to follow his plan for us. In Jeremiah, we learn, For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, plans for your welfare and not for woe, so as to give you a future of hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you look for me, you will find me. Yes, when you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. So there it is. God lays it out for us. He is with us. He knows everything about us. All we need to do is come to him, pray to him, look for him, and we will find him. And so my journey continues one day at a time, and only God knows when and where it will cease. And when it does, his plan will be complete. But until that day comes, I will continue my faith journey here with all of you, humbly and joyfully serving our God. Thank you, and may God bless you. Well, thank you. For those of you that know me know I get a little bit emotional. <laughs> So that's a tough one to come up here after that beautiful talk, Paul. Thank you so much for your story, um, for sharing your humility. For Thank you for your humility and just sharing your shortcomings, um, for sharing your incredibly deep and beautiful faith with us. And mostly thank you for sharing your love because you certainly uh, embody that here and share that with all of us. So please let's give another round of applause for Paul and all he does. Again, we are so happy that you got to join us this evening and taking time. And uh, this was, I, I hope you feel the treat that this was and Paul sharing your story. Um, we ask for your continued prayers for CEO. That's what helps keep us going and for uh, giving others encouragement to share their story. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy to, to have that vulnerability. So we do appreciate that and we appreciate your prayers so we can continue to share the good news with others. Um, our next CEO event will be November 10th, uh, so please mark your calendars. Again, it's 6.30 to 7.30. And our next speaker is going to be Paul Sherman. And Paul is an orthopedic surgeon, and he's going to share his story about his journeys to uh, Africa on medical missions and the miracles that have happened in his life. So, again, you don't want to miss that, uh, that evening as well. And there'll be more details in the bulletin. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to continue our uh, fellowship in the hospitality room for some refreshments and a chance to talk with Paul some more and each other. Um, on your way out, the CEO team has a little gift for you. Um, it's a card that looks like this. It's a St. Margaret Mary Novena. Um, and it's a uh, a beautiful prayer that you can do to receive the, the blessings that are kind of stated in the novena. Um, I think it ties in so well with Paul's, uh, you know, his faith and, and the time he spends at Eucharistic adoration and just what he reminds us is that God 
talks to us in the silence. And so taking some time with that novena can really help with that. All right. Thank you all again for being here. Head out, get your novenas and uh, some time for fellowship in the hospitality room. And we hope to see you all on November 10th. And just a, one little plug, as Paul mentioned, the uh, retreat for the men's chirp is this weekend. So uh, Saturday the 21st. So again, there's a lot of people here you can talk to about that experience. We hope you can join us. Thank you all. Have a great evening. We'll see you over at the hospitality room.